When their long-held beliefs are challenged, people tend to look for excuses. In general, these excuses fall into two main categories. Excuses that attack the validity of the challenging belief and excuses to maintain the status quo. One of the most common excuses to maintain the status quo is that humans are omnivores. But this is actually incorrect. Humans are not anatomically omnivores. Humans are anatomically frugivores. Now, frugivores are slightly different from herbivores, but they can kind of be used interchangeably because they're both plant eaters. But more on that later. The human evolution argument, if presented convincingly, is kind of a silver bullet. It proves that veganism is not only the best choice for ethical and environmental concerns, but it's also the natural diet of humans. Now there are many, many points in this argument and we don't have time to go into all of them in this episode. So we're going to focus on two of the strongest pieces of evidence, the anatomical features of humans and our evolution of a big brain. So let's compare the anatomical features of meat eaters and plant eaters. Meat eaters have claws. Plant eaters have hands or hooves. Meat eaters have sharp teeth. Plant eaters have mostly flat teeth. Meat eaters have a short intestinal tract. Plant eaters have a long intestinal tract. Meat eaters cool their bodies by panting. Plant eaters cool their body by sweating. Meat eaters drink by lapping. Plant eaters drink by sipping. Meat eaters produce their own vitamin C. Plant eaters get it from their diet. Now, meat eaters and plant eaters are the two extremes on the spectrum. Omnivores fall somewhere in the middle. They have a mixed anatomy between meat eaters and plant eaters. Humans, however, have all the characteristics of plant eaters. We do not have a single anatomical feature of a meat eater. And we do not have mixed anatomy like a true omnivore. Another notable anatomical feature of humans that suggests that we are frugivores is our trichromatic vision. Meat eaters have dichromatic vision. They're essentially colorblind because all they need to see is the movement of prey. Herbivores eat mostly leafy greens. And because basically all leaves are green, they actually don't need to see color either. So they have dichromatic vision just like meat eaters. Frugivores have trichromatic vision. We can see color because we need to be able to identify ripe fruits and vegetables. Our trichromatic vision is further evidence that separates us from both carnivores and herbivores and suggests that we are true frugivores. And this makes sense when we consider our evolutionary timeline. Hominids have been evolving for 20 million years, but only developed the ability to use tools for hunting about two and a half million years ago. So for approximately 90% of hominid evolution, the diet consisted exclusively of plants. And even when hominids were able to hunt, it's estimated that meat comprised less than 3% of the Paleolithic diet because hunting with stone tools is just plain difficult. Paleolithic hominids simply didn't eat enough meat to evolve specialized adaptations to eating meat. Now, let's talk about big brains. Our brains require a massive amount of energy. Although they only constitute 2% of our entire body weight, they consume as much as 25% of our total caloric energy in a day. And according to a recent study out of Harvard, the preferred source of energy for our brain is glucose. And glucose occurs exclusively in plants. Meat does not contain 
any carbohydrates or glucose. So eating meat could not have led to the development of a big brain because meat simply doesn't contain the optimal fuel for a big brain. But here's where it gets interesting. Some plants have more glucose than other plants. Leaves have a low concentration of glucose. A true herbivore eating exclusively leafy greens is not consuming enough glucose to develop a big brain like ours. Fruits have a higher concentration of glucose than leaves. So a frugivore is getting more glucose and more calories in their diet than an herbivore. And this is why primates have the most similar brain processing power to humans in the animal kingdom. Now, starchy vegetables such as potatoes, cassava, or squash have a massive amount of glucose. But there's a problem. They contain resistant starch, which is indigestible when raw. And that's where cooking enters the picture. The heat from cooking breaks down the resistant starch so that we can digest it. So according to these recent studies, the discovery and utilization of fire and the ability to cook resistant starches and then the subsequent access to massive amounts of glucose is what allowed us to evolve such big brains. And if we think about this in comparison to other species, this totally makes sense. Lots of other species eat meat and they never developed a big brain like us. Lots of other species eat plants and they never developed a big brain like us. Primates are the only ones that have come close because they eat a diet that's abundant in glucose, but not as abundant as cooked starchy vegetables. Cooking makes the difference. Now, in times of famine, our brain does have the ability to derive energy from ketones, which are acids formed when our body breaks down fat for energy but this biological process only occurs when our bodies are starved of glucose. It is an emergency metabolic state. The ability to cook and digest starchy vegetables has allowed us to develop a big brain, not meat. So when someone tries to justify eating animals because they believe that humans are omnivores, you can assure them that yes, early humans did kill and eat some animals. But eating animals did not play a large enough role in our evolution to affect our anatomy or physiology. Our bodies are designed to eat plants.